This video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X, the all-in-one cleaning and optimization software for your Mac. What's good everybody, Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. You know, you're gonna need to hold on really tight here because this video is gonna be a big one because there's just been so many new things that we have learned after the WWDC 20 keynote that Apple didn't talk about. So this is everything that Apple didn't tell us about iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, oh yeah, and macOS, big sir, and more. So really quickly, we gotta talk about it before we get started. Your eyes do not deceive you. I finally got a trim after what, like four months and I couldn't go to my regular person. So yeah, the, uh, the stripe, it's gone for now. And I mean, the comments though about my hair, they were starting to get a little out of hand. Like this one from Lance Johnson that said, wow, a buddy, you're gonna make some bird jealous with that home. Or this one, C. Leo Clark, Brian got that Sprint PCS haircut. Like the logo? But you know what? There were plenty of others. <sighs> I'm sick and tired of your comments, Bob. Like this one and that one. <sighs> so yeah, Quarantong was kind of getting out of hand. All right, let's get into what Apple didn't tell us. And we have to start with iOS 14. The developer beta is out. So people have had some real time with it. And Apple has said that the public beta is coming sometime in July. I put it on my iPhone XR, not my daily driver. And if you're an Apple user, you're gonna love its new functionality. I almost wanna put it on my daily driver, almost, but I won't. Now the biggest feature getting buzzed is this new back tap feature that's buried inside the accessibility options only in iOS 14. This is not on iPad OS. And this gives you the ability to double tap the phone twice or triple tap it on the back to perform an action. Now it could be anything from accessing control center or even taking a screenshot. You can get quick access to accessibility options as well, but if you wanna really like take it to that next level, you can take the shortcuts that you've created in the shortcuts app or even make a new one and then select them for the double tap or triple tap. So you can map the Google Assistant to the double tap and it launches on screen. Like how crazy is that? Shout out to MKBHD for that one. And then for my triple tap, I gotta go with playing my BTS songs. Army! Now these are both shortcuts that you can set for the back tap feature and other apps that support shortcuts will allow you to create what you want. So I guess I'm tapping that app from the back now. Okay, fine. Now there's plenty of other features Apple didn't talk about in iOS 14. You can now search for an emoji by typing it in by name instead of scrolling forever. So it'll be easy to find the peach or eggplant or splash emoji. Now I couldn't find it when I typed in squirt, but I did when I typed in splash. Whenever you copy or paste text now, it notifies you where the text has been copied from. It's Apple showing more transparency so you know what's happening and from where. It also hasn't been shown off yet, but according to the Apple Maps iOS 14 preview website, their maps will let you know when you're approaching speed cameras or red light cameras along your route. It will actually show you where these individual cameras are located on the map. How crazy is that? Also a new accessibility feature to iOS 14 is called sound recognition that can notify users about certain sounds like fire alarms or doorbells to help people that are hard of hearing. It has a wide range of sounds that you can select. It can listen for things like cats or dogs or maybe household noises like water running or people like a baby crying. So I think that's gonna be super useful as well. Now iOS 14 will also work in partnership with the Apple Watch and notify you when your watch is fully charged. Now, why is this helpful? Well, this is gonna help people use the new sleep tracking if let's say they wear their watch overnight and they'll need to charge it in the morning while they start their day. You'll be notified when it's ready to just pull off and go ahead and get it. Now in camera news, some earlier hardware is getting Apple's quick take feature. That's when you're in the photo mode and you wanna take a video without switching it and swiping on the bottom. You can just hold down on the shutter button to capture a video clip. This now works on the iPhone 10R, 10S and 10S Max. Plus switching the resolution and frame rate in the top corner is now available on all iPhones running iOS 14. It wasn't before. Now Apple showed off car key at WWDC. That's to use your iPhone as a key and showed it working with a 2021 Series 5 BMW, not a car that I'll be getting anytime soon, but BMW did announce that the digital key will have broad availability across over a dozen models, including their Series 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, X5, X6, X7, X5M, X6M, 
and the Z4 that are manufactured after July 1st, 2020. Now, BMW also said it would work with iPhone 10R, 10S or newer, and Apple Watch Series 5 and newer. Apple never mentioned Apple Watch compatibility during the keynote, but soon, think about this, you won't need to bring your keys or your phone to still be connected. And I'm absolutely loving the idea of just a more independent Apple Watch feature that it gets like a little closer, just like with little baby steps each year, real tiny steps, but we're getting there. Now, iOS 14 will be compatible with the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, and later, and the seventh generation iPod Touch. So you got those all covered, but let's now jump over to iPad OS 14. It'll be compatible with all iPad Pros. Then if you go down the list, the fifth, sixth, and seventh generation iPads, plus their iPad mini four and five, and the iPad Air two and third generations. I'm sure you got all that because actually, I'm not even sure if you even know the model iPad you have. Well, if you do, then you'll know if it's compatible. But you know, when Apple showed off the demos, Apple just barely scratched the surface when they showed off Scribble on their new iPad OS. There's all new pencil gestures for handwriting with the Apple Pencil, so you can delete text by scribbling over words to get rid of them. You can select text by drawing a line through what you want and more. It's really just so much more extensive than what Apple even showed us at the keynote. And we do know one of the biggest changes though coming to iOS and iPad OS are Apple's new widgets. They aren't new for phones at all, but it was actually Apple who had widgets on the Mac long before they appeared on a phone back in 2005 with their dashboard feature. That was really slick and you can use that to fend off all the haters. But don't get too excited about widgets if you have an iPad. I know, I'm sorry. Like we know widgets can be pinned in different sizes and placed on any home screen page on iOS. You can basically do whatever you want with them. But on iPad OS 14, you're limited to only using them in the today view sidebar. And then if you change your iPad into portrait mode, well, guess what? The sidebar and the today view, they all go away. So they just can't be used anywhere else. You also don't get the app library for organization of your apps on iPad. That again is only in iOS 14 right now, but these are still betas. So that could change later. Just like the fact that some of you are still holding on for hope that maybe, just maybe, they'll release a native calculator app. <laughs> yeah, now that's some crazy talk. But maybe even a little crazier, something I wouldn't believe we'd see even just a couple of years ago, Apple is finally showing us that they are willing to open up to third-party apps and services this year. Now, iOS and iPadOS 14 will now let you set a third-party app as the default email or web browser app system-wide. And this is really happening. So if you like to use Chrome, the browser, or an email app like Spark, it can be set as the default app. Now, developers will need to update their apps to support the feature, so that's why it doesn't work at this moment. But even beyond the iPad, later this year, third-party music support is coming to the HomePod, which will allow it to finally work with services natively like Spotify and Pandora. Now, Apple's really been so far behind this compared to the competition. You can play those services to the HomePod right now, but you need to have your iDevice open with the music app of choice open, and then send the audio over AirPlay to that HomePod. The HomePod will also be getting a new option that will allow Siri to announce when a HomeKit compatible doorbell is wrong. Now, some people are also receiving invites from the Apple Seed program to test this new software right now. It's not available yet to the public, but it's a coming soon. And also, we know that AirTags, you heard of those things? AirTags are coming. It's one of the worst kept secrets from Apple for their location tags and Find My Platform. Well, Tile and Tracker, those are two of the companies that really just built the foundation of this product category and this idea, but Apple is gonna play nice now with them with the Find My Network accessory program. This is gonna allow third-party products and accessories to work with the Find My app and let users track these items directly using the Find My app. Now, I don't know if you heard about this, but Tile, they recently had filed an EU complaint alleging Apple's anti-competitive behavior. And this move by Apple kind of quickly just helps squash some of that beef. But you can really see a big theme here around Apple playing nice with others in ways that we just have never seen before. And I think it's good for everybody. Okay, we're bouncing around all over the place, but let's get to the Apple Watch and Watch OS 7. The big feature they showed off was the addition of sleep tracking, but there's a reason that they didn't really go too in depth with all the data it tracks because right now it doesn't, like even on a Series 5 watch, they presented it really as just this way to build better habits for getting good sleep. And the Apple measure the hours of sleep that you get but people using the beta have found that it doesn't have anywhere near the information that Fitbit tracks like your light sleep versus deep sleep and your REM sleep. It's just 
that stuff is displayed down to the minute for Fitbit, not on Apple. Other than the heart rate tracking you get with the Apple Watch, Apple isn't really doing anything significantly different than their built-in bedtime feature until they start showing us more of that significant data. And I know it can always get better, but I think if they're really touting this, it's kind of a bummer out of the gates in its current form. Now, if you've ever used the Force Touch to access hidden menus on the Apple Watch, well, guess what? You can say bye-bye to that. Apple is gonna drop support for it in WatchOS 7. And it's also really an indicator that the upcoming Apple Watch Series 6 won't have that deep press Force Touch. And it's truly the end of the whole Force Touch 3D Touch. That's what it was called on the iPhone. And I use it all the time. I was such like a big fan of it. I loved it, but now it's really gone, especially with WatchOS 7. So WatchOS 7 will also be compatible with just Apple Watch Series 3 and later. So honestly, you're probably due for an upgrade if you're still on a Series 2 or earlier once the fall of this year comes around. Okay, let's talk AirPods and AirPods Pro who received some of the most exciting updates for me out of the whole keynote with, right, you had automatic switching and then you had the AirPods Pro getting spatial audio. Well, in iOS 14, Apple has added an optimized battery charging feature for the AirPods to help preserve their longevity. It's going to learn a person's daily charging routine, even though I don't really have one. It'll be tough, but it's going to wait to finish charging past 80% until they're needed. So if you charge them overnight, it might charge them up to 80% and then wait an hour before you wake up to charge the remaining 20%. It helps avoid topping up your battery constantly while it's sitting on the charger to better preserve the health of your battery. And the iPhone and Max recently had a similar battery health management feature. Okay, Apple, they announced their own Apple Silicon. It's going to power Max starting by the end of this year and the entire transition will take about two years. That also means during those two years, Apple will still be using Intel processors on some of its machines. And Intel recently sent a statement out promising to continue its support for Apple during this transition while touting their new upcoming Tiger Lake mobile platform. They were basically saying like, hey developers, nudge nudge, we're still here. Now the first Mac with an Apple processor is the developer's kit Mac mini that's using the same processor as the current iPad Pro and showed off just how powerful it is out of the gates during Apple's WWDC demo. And let's finally get to the Mac and Mac OS, you're gonna have to say it with me just one more time, big sir. That's the last time I'm gonna do it, I promise, in this video, maybe. But the all new look and feel signals the end of Mac OS X. After taking a peek at the system preferences menu, it calls it out as version 11.0. And for nearly two decades, every major release of Mac OS has been known as Mac OS X. I even have a banner in my bedroom where I grew up when it originally launched from my local Apple retailer before there were Apple stores. So yeah, I was one of those guys. And I'm not ashamed, but I've grown as a person like this boy has become a bigger boy and I've learned a whole lot more about myself and the world. I'm still buying many Apple products. Now the biggest change that's music to my ears is that Apple has brought back the iconic startup chime in Big Sur. Some people don't even remember it or even know it, but it's so nostalgic, I love it. They've even added a sound for older Macs with the MagSafe connector when you connect it. It's similar to the sound that it makes with the USB-C Thunderbolt 3 cable when it's plugged in. And then when I played around with the beta, they have new sounds for emptying the trash or even just moving files out of folders. So it not only looks new, but it sounds new. Now, one of the questions I get the most from you all, will Apple's new chips support virtualization apps to let you run Windows on a Mac with apps like VMware or Parallels? And the quick answer is no. Apple documentation officially states it will not work with virtual machine apps that virtualize x86, 64-based computer platforms. And I'm sorry, that's a sad Apple. <laughs> <laughs> the new Mac OS will get rid of the energy saving section and bring a new battery section that gives a lot more detail about the usage history and Mac's battery life over the course of the last 24 hours or even 10 days. We haven't seen anything like this from Apple on their own Macs, but the only thing that I'm staring at is that ugly battery icon and ugh, like I know Apple is tallying their new dock and new icons and there is a lot of great stuff happening in Big Sur, but it feels like it's screaming to eventually be able to work with touch screens with its larger iOS like icons, like even the control center and the menu bar with those sliders, those are made for fingers. But those new app icons, like some of those, they're just horrible. It's almost like they let the new intern make them and that person got a little too carried away with a uh, drop shadows. And I know this happens to the best of us, but this is Mac OS we're talking about, the new Mac OS. And I really hope they fix those before the official launch because if not, that's a bad apple. 
All right, thanks again to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. No matter how great or pretty dang flawless macOS may seem, it can also be guilty of multiple issues and vulnerabilities. Clean My Mac X handles these issues and helps top up your Mac's performance. It's an all-in-one cleaning and optimizing software for your Mac that's simple and user-friendly and can work wonders on my Mac and yours. The app's most popular feature is the Smart Scan. Now with one click, it examines your system for system log files and user cache that is no longer needed. Smart Scan also does a quick malware check and runs some optimization tasks to speed up your Mac and will only take a few seconds. Clean My Mac X also has the ability to handle all performance draining processes on your Mac and its optimization has always been a lot more straightforward than macOS's built-in activity monitor. It also has powerful protection and with malware removal, you can scan your Mac for viruses, adware, or cryptocurrency miners and remove them instantly. So try Clean My Mac X for free. Just use the link in the description. I've been using this product for years and if you like the product, you can upgrade for only $35 annually. All right, that's gonna do it for now. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, if you wanna dive even deeper, you can check out my weekly podcast and subscribe to the Apple Bits XL where we cover it all with special guests. So thanks so much for watching everybody. This was a long one. I know that my ride or die Apple Bits Nation hang until the end. I always got something for you in the end, but yeah, you know that the Quarantong, it was a real thing. It was kind of out of control. So thanks for hanging out everybody. We'll see you next time, all right? Peace. Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>